I'm Thomas, and these are the top five most frequently asked questions on sand or substrate for our marine aquariums, starting with, what kind of sand can you use for a reef tank? The vast majority of sand or substrate marketed for our marine or saltwater tanks is going to be some form of aragonite. Aragonite substrates are made from calcium carbonate, the same stuff corals are made from, and what you'd find on the sea floor when you're snorkeling around your favorite wild reef. It makes for an excellent natural substrate and has been used successfully for decades. It comes in various grain sizes, from fine sugar sand all the way up to coarse bits of crushed coral, and the overall white appearance looks very natural and completes the look of a reef aquarium that aims to recreate the beauty of a wild reef. Now, with that said, there are other options out there, the most common probably being the Hawaiian black sand. But it does have some drawbacks. First, it's quite sharp compared to aragonite substrate and is less inviting to fish and invertebrates that make the sandy bottom their home. And secondly, it often has magnetic bits in it that can stick to your pump motors or your magnetic glass cleaner, which can cause wear and tear and scratching. It does look pretty interesting though, so if black substrate is something you're very interested in, just make sure to proceed with caution. What is the best substrate for a reef tank? Okay, so although this question is somewhat subjective, there is one particular substrate that is very popular and widely used by many saltwater and reef aquarium owners worldwide. And that is Carib Sea's Special Grade Aragonite. It is the perfect balance of sandy appearance while being coarse and heavy enough not to kick up and float around the tank, which is a common issue with finer sand. It is suitable for a wide variety of sand dwelling inhabitants from snails, starfish, and cucumbers to sand sifting and burrowing fish species. It is easy to siphon and clean without accidentally sucking it up out of the tank and overall has been the go-to choice for reefers of all experience levels. A close runner up and another substrate that I've personally used a whole bunch is Carib Sea's Fiji Pink. It's slightly finer and does look a bit more like fine sand and can be a better choice if you do intend to have smaller sand sifting gobies or just really want a sandier look. Just keep in mind, it will be easier to kick up. So keeping flow pumps from pointing towards the substrate is gonna be important. And you'll wanna have a valve in your siphon so you can regulate the suction so you don't accidentally suck it out during maintenance. Do saltwater tanks even need sand? The short answer is no. A bare bottom tank, which is what they're called when you don't put sand in them, do have some benefits. Notably for super high flow SPS dominated systems. However, sand does play a few critical roles. Sand creates necessary habitat for certain species of fish and invertebrates, and without sand, you may not be able to keep them successfully. Sand also plays a huge role in the microbiome and filtration in your aquarium. It provides a vast surface area for microbes like bacteria to proliferate, which has a positive impact on the biological filtration in the aquarium. Without substrate, it can take much longer for a reef tank to mature, stabilize, and be ready to support corals. Long story short, bare bottom tanks should be considered an expert level option. Adding substrate is going to be the best option for most reefers out there. How much substrate do you need in your aquarium? Anywhere from one to two inches of substrate is going to be plenty to get the job done. I generally avoid going any deeper than four inches or you'll end up harboring some pretty nasty looking slimes and algaes within the sand bed that you'll be able to see from the side of the glass. And it's just not necessary for the vast majority of setups. One to two inches is easy to keep clean. It's deep enough for a wide variety of sand sifters and it's enough substrate that the pumps are unlikely to blow it away exposing the glass bottom of the tank. Should I use live or dry sand? If you're planning on using established rock that's already alive and teeming with beneficial bacteria and other important microbes, then using dry sand is perfectly fine. On the other hand, if you're gonna start with dry rock, even the stuff that says it's seeded with bacteria, I highly recommend using a live sand as well. Carib Sea's Ocean Direct probably being the best option, it's collected from the ocean and packed up with all the wild strains of beneficial bacteria and other microbes important to creating a hospitable reef habitat for your fish and corals. A close second for those who want a more manicured look would be Carib Sea's Aragalive Special Grade or Aragalive Fiji Pink, which is sifted and sorted to specific grain sizes, then packed wet with added bacteria. 
Now, I just covered the most commonly asked questions, but there's more you need to know. And thankfully, Matthew is gonna walk you through everything you actually need to know about substrate before you add it to your saltwater tank or reef tank. So click here, have a watch. You're gonna enjoy it. I absolutely love that guy. He's uh, fantastic at what he does, and maybe one day we'll do a video together. But until then, check it out, then go get your substrate and dump it in your 